Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to the dawn here in Juma Private Game Reserve. Where we've caught up with a herd of elephants here in the middle of the road. Hello, my name is Steve. I'm joined by one poor on camera and what a way to start the morning. Very happy to find elephants so early. We had a track of a leopard just there. We were going to go quickly see where the wild dogs from last night got to because it's time for them to start moving if they haven't already started. And well, we've got a roadblock. So it looks like we're going to be sitting right here for now. So everybody, don't forget this is a live and interactive game drive experience where your questions and comments are welcome. If you're watching on the app or the website, please do make sure to register. You can also go over to the YouTube chat as well as Twitter and join in on the conversation there. Cedric is out and about with me on Druma and Chris will be out and about on Amakala. Happy Monday, happy beginning of the week. <laughs> Hello, you're eating some crunchy stuff there. way to start our Monday morning. Oh, what a big head shake. That's a young boy, he's going to come and say hello, are you? Are you going to come and say hello to us? Mum's going to come and say, what are you doing? Don't play with the, ch the, play with the people. Because so a Monday with lots of new adventures indeed. Indeed. Come on little one. Come say hi. You're very brave, aren't you? Very brave. <laughs> Your little baby's gonna come up behind. Teenage boy at the back, showing how big he is. Look how big I am. I'm very big. <laughs> Luca, you were hoping for some elephant activity. Well, there are lots of them around at the moment. Oh, hello. young elephants they are the best where are you mum I can hear you rumbling but I can't see you which way did you go oh a little bit of wind there I'm embarrassed I'm embarrassed <laughs> which way did you go mum So those of you who have asked the question in the past, can elephants walk backwards? Yes, they most certainly can. Dun, dun. Riley, they're just inquisitive and they're learning. They're figuring things out and their mother's also so big. So everything is scared of a big elephant. So they think that they're big. And uh, they expect the same <laughs> re respect. And then when they chase or behave in a certain way and the animal doesn't react the way they expect it, they get a bit shy and nervous and they run back again. Very intelligent animals. They see how important body language is. They see how animals respond to the body language of the big elephants. And just like human babies, they pretend, they mimic the adults. Oh, and they throw things around too. 
Where did it go? Let me grab it again. This is either mum or auntie coming to say, come on, let's stop playing games in the road. <laughs> it's all learning for them. They, they feed on mum's milk for the first two years, and so they've got lots of time to explore. Lots of time to play. The penguins, girl, they are so sweet and precious. Himself a branch. Oh, oh, he's farting. Lots of gas. Where's everybody gone? Kev, literally full of beans. You are right. Game path there. <laughs> 
Cheeky baby Ellie, I'm glad to hear your week is already made. It's a really great way to start. How about some wild dogs in the morning? Now, there was at least 13 dogs in that pack yesterday. I didn't count anymore. It was really difficult to actually do so. But it's uh, not difficult if you find where they've gone to, to see where they've gone, because 13 dogs leave quite a trail. Not always easy to find, but you can at least get the direction. They were on the junction of Triple M and, and uh, One Eyed Pan, so they might go west again, but I doubt it. Another very misty morning here in the Eastern Cape, as you can see, and this gives us the opportunity to start off with this incredibly interesting scene, just with this short grasslands and then obviously the mist and this very sort of lone thorn tree, which has got quite a lovely shape to it, one of those classic sort of thorn tree shapes. Hi everybody, my name is Chris and with me on CamOps is Morgan and our plan is very, very easy going today. We're just going to drive around in this very misty, foggy morning and see what comes up. Not going to target anything specifically. Uh, we're literally just going to see what the area presents today. Um, Weather-wise, as you can see, and uh, as I've mentioned as well, is there's some very dense sort of mist and this is generated over the ocean by strong winds and, um, and it's blown inland uh, d during the night and then we are often greeted with this type of scene in the mornings here. It's, it's relatively common to have a lot of dense sort of mist and fog in the mornings. In fact, this morning when we got out of our house where we stay, you could actually smell, you could actually smell the ocean uh, in the air, you know, that sort of salty, saltiness. Um, and it had such a lovely, clean, fresh smell to it, right here in the bush. Bush and ocean combined. Best Joseph, moody Monday morning. Yeah, well, fortunately, myself and Morgan are not moody today. Just the scenery can be a bit moody. I like it when it's overcast like this. I, it just gives a very different feel to the bush. How it will affect animal movement. Uh, some animals are not really affected by it and some don't like it. Um, there is like a fine little, little almost say like a spray in the air. Uh, it's extremely fine. Um, very, very small mist droplets. So every now and then you will just see a sort of dark sort of smudge and that will be Morgan, who is just wiping the lens of the camera as we receive some condensation on there. And it's bound to happen at some stage. But for now, we're good. We've got some predictions for some rain uh, today. I'm not sure what time it will be. And good morning to you as well. Anna Marie. I like the shape of this sweet thorn tree. You can clearly see it's been almost like pruned naturally into almost a bonsai like shape. And that's as branches get broken, new ones grow. A rhino comes and rub against it. Elephants break more branches. Giraffe prunes it from the top and it gives it that typical, almost an African sort of shape. Yeah, we're going to move on and see what is up and about here on Amakala. Let's go and say hello to Cedric. Oh, 
Thank you so much, uh, Chris. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got Cameron. So, I'm so excited. There's lion tracks coming up to Philemon's cut line. Looks like for the Nkuhuma pride. The Nkuhuma pride of lions came all along the southern side of Juma, and they cut now towards Philemon's cut line, Zoe's area. I'm just going to let uh, maybe Jared also uh, let Steve know to keep an eye out on that side. But yeah, they're coming northwest. Fantastic. I'm hoping that we're going to find these lions here somewhere. Very fresh tracks. Very fresh tracks. Oh, imagine finding the Nkuhumas. And uh, the Nkuhuma pride, uh, oh, it's a nice big pride of uh, lions. And I'm just hoping they haven't crossed over already into Arethusa West. And they actually called the Nkuhuma pride because of this tree this specific tree right here. This is known as a brown ivory tree in Shangan, known as a Nkuhuma tree, Nkuhuma. So the first time that, that this pride was seen was under this tree here in 2008. Can you believe it? Yeah, <laughs> how ironic, we're right here. All right, let's go and see if we can find these lions. Yes, Marilla Shortcake for, uh, for sure. I think the buffaloes have, they have attracted the, this pride. So that's exactly why they've come across. But the, but the buffaloes last night, Steve left them going spaghetti crossing that side. They came now northwest and the buffaloes went northeast in that side. So no idea, but let's see. All right. It must be a very, it must be very close because I could see where they were lying down on the road and uh, then they cut into this block so I just want to make sure that I'm not going to miss any tracks here keep my eyes peeled as you know it's always nice early in the morning very important get out early so at least you still got all these lines moving around got all these lines still moving around leopards so that's why I always say when you in the reserve, in the park, make sure you're the first one at the gate and uh, you can get out early enough to really look for these nocturnal animals. I don't see any tracks coming here. They might be in this block here. So far, they would have come out here somewhere. I haven't seen anything, anything, anything. Mm. I'm gonna go a little bit further up just double check on this again unless they went into the block and they changed direction hungry hungry hippo yes let's go and find the lions that's what we're doing we are gonna go and look for the leons mm. coming out here I don't think we're too far from them. As I say, those very fresh tracks going in there. I'll have to maybe jump off and do a little bit of footwork. I'm gonna go a little bit further up. Actually, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna just do the block quickly. I'm just gonna go around the block. Because if they would have crossed, they would have crossed this road. Uh, I know Steve is, uh, Steve is on Zoe's, so maybe Steve can just take a look at uh, Zoe's uh, and to see if they haven't crossed over there. Just now I have missed a track or two, yeah. but it's many, I think it's nine of them, so I'm going to miss nine lion tracks then. Uh, well. All right, well, we're going to continue trying to track these uh, lions uh, down. Let's head over to Steve to see if he is going to also be in the area. Thanks, Cedric. Well, we found the dog tracks. We'll definitely come give you a hand. These dogs are going straight towards the gate. Now, we often talk about hyena track. Well, these dogs go up and down, actually. They've gone this way and they've gone that way. Now what's easy to see with the track here is that 
they're in a parallel line. Hyena tracks sort of do this and this, this and this, whereas the dogs are in a parallel line and they're much more squished than a hyena. The back pad is much more narrow and it's almost symmetrical, the track, whereas the hyena track is very offset to the side. And there's lots here, up and down. So we know that they'll move in a direction and they'll move back again, move in a direction, move back again. But the general direction seems to be heading towards the gate there. So if they do go to the gate, two options. One is to go left to Simbambili, one is to go right into Juma slash Bufusuk Manileti. So let's go have a look and see. And then we'll come back and give Cedric a hand there. So lots of dogs and a couple of hyenas in tow. Kimberly, yes, very much so. Very much so. They've, they look the same. Obviously, um, a, a normal kind of dog, you know, like a terrier or something like that. But uh, obviously, bigger dogs have much bigger tracks. Depends on the type of domestic dog. But uh, generally, those sort of medium sized dogs have got very much the same track as a, a wild dog um, and we do sometimes in certain areas where we guide we find um, people tracks with dog tracks and those are obviously people using dogs for poaching um, and it very much looks like a wild dog track okay so we're just going to keep our eyes peeled there we're 300 meters down the road 200 meters down the road last night so it's not very far to where we have them now and let's just see if those tracks have all just vanished again yeah so they went they went off either right or left there i didn't see i was too busy looking they would have made a decision and it would have been left or right Now they've come from that side. There is a good chance that they've gone back that side, but I'm gonna just turn around. Are you a wildlife fanatic glued to YouTube for your daily dose of animal antics? Then, welcome to Africam's wildlife community. By joining our YouTube memberships, you get no ads, just wild live streams, chat with other bush fans, get early access to exciting camera spots, and flex your wildlife knowledge with fun quizzes. Visit Africam's YouTube channel and click the join button now. Thank you. 
So while we had that sweet thorn earlier, uh, which is mostly the type of thorn or, or, or uh, thorn tree that grows out here, um, that's got true thorns. Uh, it's the only representative in the trees that were formerly known as acacias. Uh, they're now known by two different names. I'm not going to get into taxonomy now. Uh, this is the sweet thorn. And um, you can see those lovely, although menacing, sort of typical white thorns. And this time of the year they are flowering. They've got that beautiful, beautiful yellow, almost pom-pom-like, puffy flowers. Very typical of this subgrouping of thorn trees we just collectively refer to as the Vachilias, referring to the genus they belong to. There we can see the flowers. Now you will see some of these thorns are actually almost like, it's got the swollen-like appearance. And there's various insects that could potentially cause that. In a number of acacia species it's caused by certain ants. and then some, it might even be wasps. Ben wants to know if sweet thorn trees are actually sweet in flavor. Well, firstly, uh, the, the pollen contains quite a bit of, well, not the pollen, the flowerlets do contain some sugars. You can actually eat these flowers, and you, although quite powdery in terms of texture, uh, you can get a bit of sugar out of that and obviously that will attract bees to, 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 to these flowers which are the main pollinator of, of the plant itself. But also the gum on mature trees does have a sweetish sort of taste to it. So whenever the bark gets damaged oozes out the typical sort of like gum and there is a bit it is not overly sweet it's not something like maple syrup for instance but it does have a little bit of a sweetness to it and it is it's definitely edible as well the gum in fact in old days this gum was or basically had a commercial application or even things like candy and things were made out of it it was called Cape Gum in the colonial eras. It can be used as a natural thickener as well. So if you're out living out here and you can get some of that fresh gum, you can use it to thicken stews, soups, or just eat it. It's quite nutritious. But then the odor as well, it's got a very strong sweet odor when you smell the flowers. All right, let's see what is next on the list here at Emma Collar. We're going to search for things. Let's head over to Steve, who's on the move. Thanks, Chris. Well, our wild dogs all went west again, everybody, so it's a pity. It doesn't mean that they'll stay west for very long. They probably ran through to Simbabili Dam for a drink and maybe to catch some early morning impala. There's a nice little ruffle over there. Did you see it, Paul? I saw a ruffle of the feathers. Was that an owl or was that an... Batalia, I didn't quite see. Looks like it might be a Batalia. Just saw the body shaking. Oh, it's an owl. Hello. Fantastic. like a giant eagle owl of a rose. Looking a little bit disheveled. It's been a long night, I think. 
Let's see your face and we'll get a good look. Yes, it is indeed the Verose or giant eagle owl. There's the preenic gland accessed just above the rump. <laughs> it's been out all night. It's now time to do a little bit of cleaning and preening. The birds don't do their cleaning and preening in their roost sites or their nesting sites as all of the parasites, bird lice and all those sorts of things it get, get obviously deposited right where they would be sleeping. So they'll often do it away from where they hang out. Pinker, you are hoping for some owls this morning? Well, there we go. There is the biggest of the owls we find here in the Sabi Sands. A magnificent specimen. Zipping the wings, the tails, giving a proper little cleaning. Very flexible bodies, birds. I'm surprised there's no young, well, not young, there's no small birds giving it a hard time. Dina, no, this is a giant eagle owl. Um, we're nowhere near where the spotted eagle owls are. The wigs are spotted eagle owls. They're much smaller than the giant. The giant eagle owl's got the very big body and the pink eyelids, which I still haven't really figured out why a bird would have pink eyelids. A, a ferocious predator has got pink eyelids. I don't get it. Takes away a little bit of the seriousness, I suppose. Maybe it's a con. Wonderful to see him out in the open like this, preening. There's the gland accessed above the rump. It will rub the beak against the rump and then clean it through the feathers. Helen, being the biggest, has its advantages, of course. Um, it dominates all other owls. It dominates a number of eagle species as well. It also can feed on a larger range of prey. Where these guys hang out, you won't find other owls. They are very, very aggressive towards other owls. The bigger owls dominate and then the cascades down. Oh, this is the biggest owl and uh, there we go. The birds are starting to find him. Very brave, look at the size. I'm gonna give you a hard time all here on my own. You can see he's busy flicking the tail. I can't tell what bird it is from here. Oh, there's a good bum shake. I was hoping to get all of this done before Sounds like a sparrow. Hoping to get all of this done before the light came up. He wants to go find a nice sheltered spot in a tree where he can then spend the day. It's probably going to take off shortly. Oh, there we go. TC, one of your favorite owls. They are incredible. And the wood hoopoo. None of them are really that, that brave enough to take it on on its own. As soon as there's a few more birds there, you'll see they'll start mobbing him. But uh, they also, hang on, he's busy cleaning. Let's just let it do its thing and hopefully it'll go to sleep soon and not bother us. They take flamingos, herons, Scrub hairs. I've seen one with a genet. So, and obviously, rodents make up a large portion of their diet. Opportunistic hunter. They don't only hunt at night, they will sit in a perch in a tree, uh, sometimes over game paths. And if some unsuspecting diurnal day animal walks past, well, they will capitalize. I've seen uh, videos of them taking young eagles out of nests. 
at night. They really are a force to be reckoned with. Well, Chris, both male and female have pink eyelids. Um, it might be an element of mate recognition, which is what they talk about. Ear tufts in owls are not actually ears; they are they are tufts on the head, which will uh, enable owls to know which are the same species. But maybe it has something to do with the mating. This. They, they fall in love with only those that have pink eyelids. It keeps them focused on the same species. But nice to see out in the open in the middle of the day. Well, not the middle of the day, but... Crooks a very cool bird. Eagle Owl, named after an explorer, a French explorer. So they've even been known to take warthogs and monkeys. Play the call for you. He is the dominant fellow around, so I might play the call for you just now. We all know the struggle of finding the perfect gift. But what if you could give them an unforgettable experience? Something truly extraordinary. Introducing Nature Eye. Fly a real drone remotely at iconic locations, witnessing the beauty of nature like never before. Sign up to be an explorer and you could win one of these experiences yourself. Visit natureye.com today.
Well, I'm going to go down this road because that main tracks came straight to this side. I'm going to go down this road and we're going to take a look. Just joined us now. I uh, had uh, Pride of Lion tracks on Gary Main. Unfortunately, the southern road of uh, Juma. I had to go quickly check them out again, and I realized that that Pride and Kuma Pride uh, turned, and I went straight south again into Hoffman's, into another property that's south of Juma. So that's a, that's a little bit unfortunate. So the guys are busy following up on that Pride of Lions a little bit further south into that other property. But for now, I am going to try and see which male lion came up this side because it's just for one. Just one, and it looked like it was running. So I have to just keep my eyes peeled here. Yeah? It's always nice. It's, I love the morning. That's why for me, it's the morning, the morning safari to me is always the most exciting one. I, I love the afternoon. Don't get me wrong. I love both so morning and uh, afternoon. But just the morning to me is like you know, it's everything has been happening during the night time. You get tracks. You get to follow up and try and see if you can find that uh, individual, and it becomes more of a like I can say a cat and mouse game. And uh, in the morning, and. I love it, love it, love it, love it. No, Jackson, that's a, the Nkumas are south. The Telemoti breakways are the northern side of Juma. I don't think, uh, look, if, if the Nkumas decide if that pride and Guma pride decides north, north of Juma, yes, you know, then it's easy for them because they are so so much bigger than <laughs> Telemati breakaways. It's yeah, no, Telemati breakaways practically cannot remain in that area for too long. They're going to get pushed out again and chased away again. That's just going to be the, the story of their lives for the next uh, uh, for the next while. So. That's why it is still going to be very, it's still been a lot of hardship for that pride. But as I said, they might get through it and uh, come out tops at the end of the day. But the Nkuma pride is just such a formidable pride here at the moment. It's, it's what, it's 11, 11 individuals in that pride. It's a strong pride. Some big females there. Well, we're going to go down here slowly and keep our eyes peeled on this in this area to see if we can find that male line. Let's head, up, head back to uh, Steve to see what's happening on his side. No contest at all. No contest at all. I'd love to see the Uncle Hummets. It's my pride, that one. Now we'll be moving into there to give Cedric a, a hand just now but um, on our way out this morning we had a leopard track just over here but I was really keen to go and see what those dogs got up to and now I know they've gone west so now I'm gonna have a look at this leopard track I've got to still see where it came from I think it was a female. I'd looked at it with the torch in the darkness. And I was like, okay, mark this spot. I'll be back. They love coming from, from this junction. And this was just up there. I'll show you the track. It's actually going to be quite nice in this light now that the light is, the sun is out. Okay. There we go. I saw one. Let's see if I can get it for you. <laughs> Frankie, why are the Unkuhumas my pride? Okay, and boy, I hope you're going to get that. I'm sure you are. Frankie, well, I, I've known them since 2018, and I've seen I've seen the cubs. I've even walked into the lions and tracked them 
many many times okay so what have we got here we've got tracks okay can you clearly see over here that this one there's a pad at the back there's toes and then in parallel line there's another one this is much clearer this is the back foot the back foot of a leopard track or lion track is always much clearer than the front foot because when they're walking their front foot normally hits the floor and it makes a bit more mess one two three four toes and then so this is the right side this is the left side but it's walking quite quickly but sometimes you get confused about male or female and if you're not sure get out a measuring measuring tool and measure now my knife is 10 centimeters the substrate here is sandy so it can look a little bit bigger than it is so measure the back foot the back foot there is far shorter than 10 centimeters so there's definitely a female leopard and she's walking down a slope here so what's important to notice is how fast she's walking how far the front foot is behind the back foot goes to indicate that the animal is walking quite quickly um, walking at a territorial marking sort of space um, not running but also the front foot gets quite disturbed when they're walking quickly but that might just have been because they were walking down the slope here so female leopard walking in that direction back towards our camp very very nice we're going to follow and uh, the elephants were after because there's a leopard track and then there's no leopard track here there's the elephant there's the leopard there so the elephants were after and we saw the elephants oh hang on yeah she's on top top of that elephant Bianca we're always learning we're always learning but um, it's all about hypothesis testing okay so what are we going to do how are we going to test this hypothesis okay this direction here Gallego Road is that way Vuita Quarantine Road is that way Gauri Dam is straight down the drag so I'm going to go to the next junction and I'm going to check has she gone left straight or right and then go to the next junction left straight or right it's just a and if you go to if you you can't find on that junction you go to the next one where there's more sandy soil nothing come back go a little bit further down that road I feel like she's going to go either straight past our camp or she's going to turn onto quarantine that is my thoughts very likely straight down to the dam very likely onto quarantine what would she be doing at night if it's a territorial patrol she'll be walking her territory if she's walking quickly like this in the road that's because she's looking for something to eat and quarantine is the takeout uh, place of leopards in the Sabi sands for those in the wet and cold this festive season transport yourself to a warm and sunny Africa with virtual safaris in real time. Interact with African naturalists, connect with fellow nature lovers across the globe, fall in love with nature, and join the Wild Earth family this festive season. Wild Earth, connecting you to nature.
So there might be areas with wildebeest and hartebeest, perhaps something else. And we will drive around and at the same time look for any signs of perhaps the lions or even the, the three cheetah males who was last seen in our general area where we are now. As you can see there, beautiful open plain in grassland. Where we are finding ourselves at the moment. Which also should make it good terrain for cheetahs. This is the type of terrain a cheetah would, would like. Good morning, Kelsey. Yeah, I'm also very eager to see those three male cheetahs. The three amigos. <coughs> My apologies. Yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll definitely, I think, up our efforts in terms of searching for them. It's actually why we've come to this particular area where we are now. It's because of the fact that they were seen around here yesterday. So basically, to give an idea, the reserve is very big. So you choose a specific area and you might like drive there but you, once you've chosen that area in that direction you basically spend your entire drive there because you go from the one side to the other side if there's for instance a lion scene or let's say the cheetahs you know it, it can take you quite a bit of time to cross from the one area to the next because of the size of Amakala. so you might find that we are heading towards the basin to look for the male lion. And then somebody finds cheetahs in the far west. And then you can't really respond. It will take you too long. By then, your safari is finished. So size is a great thing of a reserve. It's a, it's a great thing to have. But it's also a large property. It can also bring some challenges. Good morning, Joshua. Um, yeah, yeah, Cape Leopard, <laughs> that will be great. Um, are they definitely around? We see tracks and there's enough evidence that they are around. And occasionally there'll be a sighting of them. But it's not very common out here. And uh, it's just fun watching these zebras. It's very calming. Well, we're gonna crisscross these plains to look for any sign of the three amigos. And while we do that, let's um, go check in with Steve. Good luck, Chris. I hope you catch up with those three amigos. Our female leopard tracks um, veered off towards Galago. So they didn't go straight. She veered. And I'm just every now and again I get a little 
scratch in the earth here, which indicates she's walked here, but it's not a very nice road to, to track on, and this area is very tricky. Lots of drainage systems here. You know, our cats do like to walk on the road, but uh, every now and again they don't walk on the road. And then you're left with a bit of a head scratch. But the last track was coming down here. There is a bit of a shortcut through there. Sorry, let me just communicate on the road. Okay. Okay, so Cedric is on the radio now. Um, he wasn't able to hear the update before that the Nkuhumas have been found on Arathusa. But I hear he's on the radio, so maybe you can just let him know, Jared, because he's still following up on lions that have left the property. It's always nice to know when they have left, and then we know we can stop tracking. Lots of perfect leopard habitat here. Okay, there's very nice sandy, sandy soil. And a leopard track right in the middle of it. Love it. Love it when they do that and they walk on the sandy bits. Franklin, is your question, what makes the roads difficult to track on, or which roads are difficult to track on? Did you hear that, Impor? Yeah, some of the roads are rocky, or some of them have been saturated, if it's been raining. Then, um, then the soil on the road is quite hard. And when the soil is hard, you know, you might as well be trying to track an animal walking over concrete. That's why a lot of reserves will will drag their roads regularly with tires just to soften up that top layer. Just so that any animal that walks on there, it makes it very easy to track. Easier to track. And she's turned there. She's very likely gone straight through that drainage system there. But it's always worth double checking sometimes they walk in the middle so highly vegetated roads uh, roads that are maybe very clay rich that have gotten quite hard they don't leave an impression or certain um, roads that also get a little bit a um, little bit hard due to just the soil structure so regular dragging of roads is very helpful and it would be nice if we got that done more regularly here. Really makes us have to work. You notice when you go to Chitwa, picking up on tracks there is very easy. The roads are regularly dragged. Okay, well, I think Cedric's received the update now that the Uncle is off the property. So let's go see what he's going to get up to next. Thanks, uh, Steve. Uh, yes, look, I'm still following up on one male lion tracks. As I said, the, the Nkuma's tracks went there. Apparently, they found them on safari. But there's still one male lion track that's coming into this area. I thought it was actually went west, but it didn't. He went northeast into this block uh, towards, how can I say, Taxon's Road, Rebecca. Um, Rebecca's, I'm, I'm on Rebecca's now, but towards another road there called Philemon's Cut Line. So I'm just... Uh, giving names here because uh, Jared can also relay to uh, uh, Steve because it's nice that Steve and myself are working pretty much together in the same area. He's got leopard tracks at the side, I've got lion tracks here so at least we know what we're busy doing 
and he knows where I am and I know exactly where he is. All right, so this is now, all the buffaloes came over here. So this was maybe from yesterday. And I've got a feeling that this male lion is following these buffaloes from last night. So, because that's exactly, the buffalo tracks are all here now. And I'm sure he's coming in here to try and follow up on these, uh, these buffaloes. So, I'm just gonna keep our eyes peeled. Maybe if we do find buffaloes, we might find him. How many times does that happen? Yo, oh, plenty of times you find that lions are busy trailing some buffaloes. You just go look for the buffaloes. Easier to track and find and locate. Uh, oh, bad, no, I'm not too sure. It comes all the way from the southern side. So from the southwestern corner of uh, Juma. I don't think the Kruger male goes all the way that side. So I've got no clue which male lion this could be. No idea. There's only one. If I saw two male lion tracks, I would say maybe the black dam males that would have come through here. But it's just uh, for one big male. Oh, we need to find him. We need to find him and find out exactly which male it is. Maz, yeah, me too. I need a boom shakalaka moment now. Really, really do because, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my tail is up like a hyena at the moment, trying to see if we can locate. Because all of a sudden we've got some nice uh, line tracks again here. Yes, we had the Talamati breakaways, but a nice big male would be wonderful for the start of uh, the week. I'm also holding thumbs that. Uh, Steve comes right there with his leopard tracks. I'm not too sure if he's got a female leopard tracks or male leopard tracks. I haven't heard updates. On, as I said, we only updates we get is uh, or for me on Rusty is through our director. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Jared. Female leopard tracks. Okay, so he's following up on female leopard tracks. So nothing here. Yeah, I might just go a little bit further down and cut across. I see all the buffaloes. They went that way. So let's go in into that direction. Hmm. But if he's in this block, oh, this block, this block is very big and uh, very thick at the moment. Very, very thick. Whoa. I think I'll come out here with uh, with more ticks on my body than hairs. No, Jerome, I've seen it before. Males, oh, they can follow. You know, they get the opportunity. If there's that opportunity of a buffalo that's lagging behind the rest of the herd, or if there's a little calf, why? Oh, well, that's perfect. It'll be perfect. So, no, it won't be too dangerous. It just has to, as long as it's, if it's an experienced male, then you know, they know what to do. It's not the, it won't be his first rodeo. So he's, uh, that male's done it quite a few times. And look, a male line is 200 kilograms. And you've got 200 kilograms, it's, you've got a lot of weight, you know, you're powerful. That's a lot of power there. All right, let's, Go this side. Mm. Is there, oh, there's Aina on the road. Oh, it's coming towards us as well. Oh, there's Aina on the road. Yeah, and I and and Aina as well. Yeah. Who is it? Who are you? Hello. Good morning. Got its head down and on a mission. Is it that, that immigrant male that's uh, been seen recently? Uh, what's his name? Surprise, you call him. <laughs> it's a surprise again. I'm just trying to see which. 
hyena. You've got a very tattered left ear. You know, a little bit close in there. Oh, I've never seen this one. Got a very huge notch out of the left ear. I don't know whether this is which hyena this is. Uh, it's just looking down, it's not even looking at us. Oh, oh, hold on. Um, okay, I'll just. Oh, um. Alright, just, yeah. Uh, Jared, can you just. Uh, but yeah, we just had. Uh, it looks like this hyena's got a snare. Um, Alright. Uh, oh my word. It looks like the snare's off, eh? Oh my word. Alright, yeah. I'm gonna follow this quickly. Oh my word. Good luck with that, Cedric. Always sad to see. But, uh, we haven't seen another another leopard track since the last. But there's a very tricky area to follow up on a cat in, I'll be honest. That's why I was hoping she didn't turn left, <laughs> went straight or, or right. Much easier to follow in those areas. But we're going to come around to Gary Dam have a little look over there we might be lucky in the way Sumi has been moving I kind of assume that it's her tracks I'm not sure though. It's also very used to be a very popular area for Tlalamba. But we had Insumi the other day walking from here that way and it's very possible that she came back. Not a normal sort of route for Shadulu. Cheetahs and other animals, your leopard vibes <clears throat> are well received. We are looking. <laughs> Let's just go spend a quiet moment at the dam. I could uh, provide, prove to be fruitful. There are elephant tracks and signs everywhere Welcome to Eco Training Pridelands Conservancy. Uh huh. Hey, Susan. No. Oh, look at her. She's absolutely gorgeous. Look at these two pushing each other.
had in Sumi and the monitor lizard just there a couple of days ago. Very entertaining. It's nice to see. I mean, we talk about the monitor lizard's defense mechanism of whipping the tail. It's quite something to see. I mean, you, you can't really even see it. It moves so quick. But it was enough to deter a young female leopard. Don't know if it would work for a big male leopard. Okay, let's just sit here for a moment and pause and have a little look, a little listen. Maybe take off a jacket. It's definitely starting to get a bit warm. Welcome to Gauri Dam. Now, the immediate area where we are, there's a lot of crows flying around here, and then it's got this black-backed jackal that seems to be sniffing around. So I suspect something has died somewhere around, or possibly the remains of a, of a kill earlier. You can clearly see why it's called a black back jackal. It's got that sort of like saddle on the back, which is actually more of a silvery color. So that lower, like lower part that are black. Oh, there he goes. Off he went. Looks like a uh, great, great, great. little bit yeah, to, to the left. Yeah, I think they've got stunning coats. I'm out of view now. There's plenty of them out here. I mean, these guys are found nearly throughout South Africa. What? Chasing, chasing. Julian, um, scrub his. Jackals have been known to catch them. Um, they've got an extremely wide. Uh, sort of profile of, of prey animals that they target. They scavenge quite a bit as well. Uh, they're often seen um, with, with where predators have killed animals and especially with lion and what they do because they're extremely fast and agile they wait until the lions look away and they'll quickly run in and snatch a bit of meat and run away again. Um, so scavenging makes up a large sort of portion of their diet. If they find a dead bird or a dead lizard, they will eat it. But from there, they, in terms of hunting, they hunt rodents, they hunt hares, squirrels. Um, they've been known to eat some small snakes, uh, lizards, monitors. Um, I've seen them licking termites off the ground when you've got these big alate eruptions. Alates are those winged adult fertile termites that you see emerging after the rain. It's virtually endless. It's, it's anything they can overpower, they will take. Even small antelope like baby impalas. Anyway, let's quickly go and find out from Cedric happening with the injured hyena. All right. Ooh. All right. I've just... Uh, the hyena went across there. Apparently that hyena is known as Notch because it's got the notch out, out of the ear there. Uh, yeah, look, the wound does not look good at all, but the main thing is, I'm telling now to Cameron, it's, it hasn't got the snare 
the wire that's around the neck anymore so that that wire is off but it's still got not a <laughs> it's a nasty wound oh yeah unfortunately i think it's such a big problem at the moment uh, uh, snaring um and to really find all the snares around is it's you know it's impossible you usually can go maybe get a huge team and do like some uh, sweeping snare sweeping in other words you sweep through the area try and gather as, up as many snares as possible um but uh yeah you never all, you're never gonna get all of them that's the thing so uh, set up those snares again and the whole idea of snaring is to you know the people want to get bush meat so things like daika and zianbok and warthog those are the things that they're looking for and unfortunately especially hyenas hyenas move so far and they move all over the show and and um, that's why they get so many times they get the snares around their necks and it is it is it's uh, it's not a pretty sight not a pretty sight i i really get angry i i get so angry about that oh i get angry mm. but anyway as long as the snare's off that's the main thing at least it's not there anymore anyway um i'm gonna go continue uh, see if we can follow up on this mm. Male, male line uh oh, cindy d yes thanks i am I'm way i'm way better i'm way better sorry i'm just, just a little bit uh with the situation but uh yes thanks cindy d i am feeling great 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 all of a sudden i'm almost uh 110 percent good all right let's see if this male line didn't come this way because all the buffalo tracks are coming through here now I just haven't seen these tracks again coming through, but as I say, I was pretty much taken off my course due to uh, that hyena. Let's see around here. I know Steve had the buffaloes around this side yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah, camera. Yeah. This side, huh? find any other male line tracks here. And it's always such a nice little mud wallow this. Yeah, this is always a nice little pan on pangolin track. It's always a beautiful, beautiful little pan. I'm seeing hyenas swimming in there relaxing on hot days inside of that water all right well we are going to slowly head back towards treehouse stand just to see that side uh, let's head over to steve good luck sifting through the tracking this morning cedric we've have no success with any further tracks of that female leopard. Stop and do the small things. Now I said there's elephant activity all over the place. This southern red bull hornbill is practicing a very interesting behavior. There's a number of birds that will practice this kind of behavior. We will call it leaf tossing as well as dung flipping very similar behavior of a bird being able to access insects and seeds in under the undergrowth of uh, of trees but then also in the dung so spur fowl guinea fowl barbets starlings hornbills will practice this with elephant dung and they're busy turning the elephant dung over if you imagine that the elephant of this road but if it was on a nice sort of sandy area or an exposed patch that uh, was in between vegetation there's seeds in there grass seeds tree seeds possibly um, there's organic material the bird is basically spreading out the compost in search of of grubs in search of insects 
larvae that might be in there. So covering the soil surface with the organic material, which is nutrient enriching. I'm just going to speak on the radio quickly. Uh, good morning, Pete. Okay, Cobbett, thanks very much. So Cedric's following up on main line tracks around uh, Pangolin track area. I'm not sure the success there so far. So the organic material is spread out. If you ever did get organic material and compost in your garden, the objective is to spread it out onto the surface of your flower bed, your veggie garden. It provides mulch which provides breeding sites for bacteria and microorganisms. It keeps the harsh sun from compacting or drying out the top surface layer. My microorganisms, bacteria, do not like the sun. They actually are very against the sun. They live in the soil, so they need to have some form of blanket on top to protect them. And they are the ones that do all the breakdown of organic material into the nutrients that the soil then holds which then benefit the plants. So elephants have access to trees and grasses in their solid form. And then they've fed on it, and they've fermented it, they've dropped it on the ground. It is fermenting still. It is filled with bacteria, microorganisms. Guinea fowl will actually feed on the fermenting dung. Indeed, Bianca, it is a, <laughs> a buffet of food and a number of organisms will actually survive off of the elephant dung themselves from time to time so those nutrients from the tree <clears throat> from the grass which were locked up are far more available and ready now out of the elephant's diet, 40% is actually digested, 40% is undigested, so there's a lot of good stuff still there. Lots of insect breeding grounds. It is a ecosystem on its own. So it's a very good feeding behavior. It allows certain birds to stay here all year round because well, there's always elephant dung. Even everything has a purpose, everything has its place. Nothing is disconnected from the whole. Yeah, Candy, well, I've seen a hornbill trying to eat a mouse before. Um, obviously, they feed on a lot of insects and fruits and seeds. But um, I have seen one trying to eat a mouse. So I suppose you could call them omnivorous. I didn't see it physically eat the mouse. I saw it wiping the mouse against the branch again and again and again. The uh, ground hornbill is most certainly omnivorous. And he's gone. So very opportunistic birds. And that pile of elephant dung has now been spread out, processed opened up. Very good.
Okay, well, we're going to carry on down the road here. If I can get the car started and then send you over to uh, Makala to check in with Chris and those jackals. These jackals are still around. They keep on moving out of sight, like behind bushes and so forth. So we're just enjoying the scenery while we wait for them to come out again. There's in fact three of them. It looks like it's a male and a female and perhaps a young, young adult. Uh, oh, there we go. There they are. There's one there. Uh, perhaps a youngster that's still with the the pair, probably their parents, or its parents. And they were at one stage digging out something and they grabbed something I suspect it to be a type of rodent, perhaps a mouse. So this is one of the two different types of jackals found in South Africa. So black backed jackal. And this is found almost throughout the entire country. Dan is asking if jackals regurgitate for their young like wild dogs. I actually don't know. Well, it might sound like a very basic question I honestly don't know it is relatively common amongst canines to do that so I suspect there could be a possibility that they do it I know they bring food back to their pups uh, Zackles are gone now they've now I think they've gone behind that bush and I think it's all right. Uh, got a bit of assistance there from the directors saying the African Wildlife Foundation confirms that they actually do regurgitate. I suspected that they would because they are essentially canids and like I mentioned it is it is something that is you know, dog-like animals are known to do that. And it's not specific to wild dogs only. So I suspected that they would. <coughs> and it makes perfect sense because they do den with them. Evan um, wants to know if they've ever been habituated. Um, okay, I'm going to go two answers on this one. So habituated, right? Um, vehicles, definitely. I and mean, here's a, a, a perfect example um, where they have absolutely no problem. At one stage, this jackal was two, three meters from our vehicle. So they're quite used to the vehicle, especially out here. Um, we're then not really pressured by humans in any way. Just bear in mind, it is widely regarded in South Africa, especially in agricultural regions, as a, as a problem animal. And they do cause damage in terms of taking livestock. Uh, just this is a background. So they are persecuted in some regions. But then, if you're referring to habituating in terms of being tamed, um, I've, I know of a few accounts where people have actually hand reared them with mixed success. It's like I always say, you know, we have dogs already as a domestic species. And this is just my point of view on it. You know, leave the wild animals in the bush. Uh, it's my experience that raising, rearing wild animals as pets 
it never ends well. With exceptions. But basically, you get a place like here where they've realized that the vehicles are not a threat. They don't run away from it. Now it's gone already, again. There's one again. Hmm. No, not coming out today again. Just love the scenery. So there's one that came out again now. Fantastic. Our UK family is important to us. Wild Earth is making your viewing experience more convenient with a time shift that will see a delayed start. Our sunrise safari will now be broadcast at UK Sunrise Times. Don't miss a moment of your favorite shows. To watch it live, go to the Wild Earth app or website. Incredible. Wild Earth, connecting you to nature. The thing about a male lion, they can cover much greater di distances than a uh, female. Uh, sorry, Jared, you broke up. Go again with the comment there, uh, Jared. And Marie, thank you so much. I'm hoping they will need it. Oh, there's so many impalas here. Need some 
lion vibes, yes? Sorry, impalers. You have all standing by? So, uh, standing by, standing by. I heard somebody calling something about for your teller. Access road, so maybe they've located it. Let's see. Oh, I can't get all of them, yeah. Well, welcome back live to the Mawati River where we were being charged a moment ago by a giraffe. So I decided to walk behind us. I'm gonna walk down the riverbed. Pretty tricky walking in the river like that. No, he's gonna come straight out. Big fellow. Got a duck under the bushes when you're that tall. Just a quick munch on the way. He's on a mission. We were coming through the river and he came down the road quite quickly. Obviously on a mission to head somewhere. Not sure where exactly that is. We just suddenly realized how thirsty he was. Okay, well we're gonna carry on. He's going in the opposite direction to us. Most certainly, William. The lions in the Sabi Sands hunt everything. Maybe not elephant, but they've, they've definitely killed hippo before. Giraffe definitely do fall on the menu. But uh, some, some prides do better at buffalo and giraffe than others. Nkuma pride does really well at both. There's not a lot of giraffe in the Sabi Sands. There are a lot of buffalo that move through, but you know, I used to spend time with a pride of lions in, in the Kruger called the Mountain Pride that were specialists that you're off. Doesn't quite know what to do with buffalo because the herds didn't really spend a lot of time there. They knew how to tackle buffalo bulls, but they didn't know how to isolate a buffalo from a herd. They were great at tripping up giraffe. And some prides just don't quite know what to do with buffalo or giraffe. They just don't have the experience or the skill and it's a very dangerous animal to hunt. Very, very dangerous. Very powerful, very heavy. And uh, there's possible injury and death in every giraffe and buffalo hunt. So there's lots of risks involved. Okay, so some of our buffalo came through, not all of them. Mandy will have on the trail of the buffalo now. They, um, they crossed the drainage line just behind us there and there's tracks moving here but I think they moved in quite a large line like this. Um, we might find them shortly, although none of the dung, lots of tracks heading straight down here. A lot of the dung is not that fresh. We did see them on the other side there last night at what time was that? At about six. So it's a long time ago. You know, they don't have to go very far. There's a lot of pans along this system over here, but the direction they're going um, if they keep heading in that direction, they'll be at Buffalsuk Dam. Or they're going to 
have veered off and will go to Gary Dam at some point. There's lots of beautiful feeding landscapes here at the moment. Um, I haven't seen a lot of buffalo activity on the property in, until yesterday morning. So there's lots and lots of good grazing for them. Lots of water. And if you missed the show last night, myself and Cam sat pretty much the whole afternoon. I heard a buffalo in a puddle. It was really quite special. Definitely a first for me. Okay, so the tracks are here, along the road, moving into the drainage. This is the kind of, lots of splattered dung there. So if they keep on this exact line, just have a look at how fresh this dung is. It's, uh, it's gone black and it's got the crust on it, so it was from last night, heading through there. But they would have been feeding and feeding and feeding and then bedded down again and then probably another bout of feeding this morning and then uh, probably bedding down again as we speak but yeah we'll we'll find them we'll find them and uh, as we try to find a buffalo let's send you over to Cedric and see how he's getting along with his lion tracks Well, Steve, I'm sure you're gonna get, you're gonna have more luck than me. Uh, uh, the male lion has crossed into Buffalzook here at uh, Baobab Dam. That male lion, but that's not good for the Talamati breakaways. You must remember the Talamati breakaways were pretty much there close to the dam as well yesterday afternoon, and it, this male came straight through from the south, straight through to the north. I have no, no idea. It could be the Kruger male. It, it, very possible. I mean, I'm just, you know, very possible. But, yeah, unfortunately, we did not get to see him. Uh, well, anyway, that's fine. We've got some nice impalas. Beautiful herd of impalas here on uh, impala plains. <laughs> How ironic. Quite a huge herd. Sure, there must be at least about 60, 70, 80 of them here. Plenty, plenty of impalas. All very relaxed. Well, when we got here, they were snorting and they were looking north, but then I realized there was a, a lone impala ram that was moving in the thick vegetation. And of course, this herd thought it was a predator and they started snorting at the poor, poor guy. Riley, yeah, of course. Sometimes, you know, how many times I've actually stopped with impalas and all of a sudden they started snorting and, you know, use them as an indicator that there's a predator around and I've found a leopard busy stalking the impalas or moving past or even lions many a time. So it's always nice just to sit here with them, watching them busy feeding. All the little lambs are in their little nursery there under the, looks like a spike thorn. So yes, it's always nice just to sit a little bit here with her, these beautiful antelope. And a lot of tails wagging, so many flies around at the moment. You can see their tails are quite, quite busy, trying to swat all the flies away from their body. And it's such an important animal to to the ecosystem yeah to what we have yeah because remember in the stats if you go look at the panthera database so if uh, on the panthera, panthera database if you do see lions or you see leopards Active and all that um, if we do see something like that and we see them on a kill we actually mention what species of animal that uh, that lion or that leopard has killed and you can put their impala and all that. And on the database, I think it was a few years ago, we actually took a look what was the most common species of uh, of prey 
to those predators. And uh, I think it was up to about 80, 85% was an impala to a leopard. So leopards would take at least 85% of the time uh, an impala down. So it just shows you very, very important to a lot of the, pre or many of the predators around you. Wild dogs, your cheetah, your hyenas. Kim, you say, is it dangerous to encounter impala on a bush? Well, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Impala, will, you can't even get 60, 70 meters from them and they already run off. So no, no, impalas, they are not dangerous at all. Not at all. They'll run away. That's what they do. They don't attack. They run away from danger. But I've had it with uh, wildebeest once. I had a huge herd of wildebeest on one of these big open clearings at one of the lodges I was working at. Went on the bushwalk. I thought that's all good and well. I'm sure the wildebeest is going to take notice of us, and they did. And I thought, okay, well, now they should be moving off. Nope. The wildebeest, uh, the male wildebeest, decided to stand up for his uh, females, and he started kind of pushing towards us, almost acting a little bit, a, a bit aggressive to to us on foot. And um, that was quite interesting. Luckily, he didn't do anything, but yeah, he just kind of warned us off and said, do not come any closer. A wildebeest out of all animals, eh? Interesting. Uh, and it wasn't George. For those in the wet and cold this festive season, transport yourself to a warm and sunny Africa. With virtual safaris in real time, interact with African naturalists, connect with fellow nature lovers across the globe, fall in love with nature and join the Wild Earth family this festive season. Wild Earth, connecting you to nature. Well, welcome back live, everybody. We, we cut the, the tracks of the buffalo and the dung again. They crossed heading north. And they were on that road we were on, and then they veered off a bit sort of east. 
sorry, west, <laughs> and then they cut north. The way that they're moving, in quite a straight line, indicates that they probably were chased a little bit by lion yesterday. Um, the dung was quite old, and then uh, we found some fresher dung just down the road here, and they seem to have veered off again, probably towards Bufusuk Dam now. So we're going to go and have a little look-see. It is quite a big block on the right-hand side, lots of, lots of cover, lots of grass. Perfect place for them to have spent the night, but Bufusuk Dam's just over there. So we go around there, have a look if they haven't come out. But some of the dung we had on the road here was very, very fresh. Very similar to yesterday morning when I had that fresh dung on the road. We went all around the block, they didn't come out. They weren't far from where we had that fresh dung. We'll be in Bifflesuk Dam in the next four minutes or so. It's very close, it's just over there. Let me actually have a little listen. Let's have a listen, shall we? If they are there, and we will hear them. anything. Lots of bird calls. This time yesterday morning they were also very quiet until I, until I walked in and they heard a little brrrr. I knew I had them. Somewhere in here. We'll find them. Just double check that they haven't come out. They don't need to move that far in the summer months. They don't invariably, but uh, when you get crossing roads in straight lines, then you know that something's chasing them, and then they, they bunch together and they move quite quickly. Otherwise, they move slowly in a nice wide arc as they feed. The mist has returned. Just as I thought it was lifting, it has returned. But it does create some really incredible visuals with this giraffe and the trees behind it. Quite a few giraffes around here. They're quite widespread. We can't get them all into into one shot. You can see at least three or four, in fact. There might be more. Oh, just take a look at that mist. This particular giraffe. Seems to have something in its mouth. A gen, nothing like a, a misty giraffe. It is very nice. This one's got a very thin neck, unusually thin. <laughs> um, there's something weird happening here. It's got something in its mouth and it's not its normal food. When they do this, it's not the normal way they eat. Okay, what's happening here? It's very likely got a small piece of bone in its mouth. And giraffes are known to do this. So whenever an animal is eating or trying to consume something that's not part of its normal diet or foreign objects. 
It's in ecology referred to as pica. So what giraffes often do, they'll pick up pieces of bone. Now some refers to it as osteophagia, the eating of bone. I'm not so convinced that they're actually eating the bone. Still a lot of discussions about this, whether it's true osteophagia, the eating of bone, or whether it's perhaps just taking a piece of bone, rolling it in the molars, maybe tiny, tiny, tiny fragments can come loose, possible. It's likely because of a deficiency, probably calcium. Perhaps they are sucking on the bone as well to extract nutrients from the inside. Some uh, biologists even suggest they could be related to dental maintenance. I just want to confirm that I heard right, uh, MDB asking if this giraffe could be pregnant. Yeah. Correct. Um, it's certainly got quite a bulging stomach. So it is possible. It's very difficult to see when giraffe are pregnant because their stomachs are usually bulging like that due to the fermenting gas in the stomachs. Not fermenting gas, gas due to fermentation. It does bloat them up, but it could, it could be that it is indeed pregnant. It is quite bulgy. See this mist is now intensifying. We had a relatively clear view of this drop, and you can see how it's it's just getting thicker and thicker. And it does seem like they are targeting the sweet thorns. MDB, uh, encountering giraffes on a bushwalk, um, best thing is just view them, enjoy them. They're generally speaking relatively okay uh, at certain distances with people. We don't consider them dangerous um, at all. Uh, I'll get back to that now, but I've had multiple bushwalks where we got very close to giraffe. You know, they if you approach them in a certain manner, manner, like a very non-threatening way, they are less prone to run away from us as opposed to a lot of other antelope or hoofed animals. So giraffe is a great animal to encounter on a bushwalk. Like I said, you know, with a bit of technique, you can get relatively close. But we don't regard them as dangerous. However, mums with calves, be careful. There's been isolated incidents where they actually have attacked people. Uh, so keep your distance from mums with calves. In normal circumstances, they are not considered dangerous. Right, it seems like Cedric has found all the hyenas. Let's go and have a look. Right, well, we've got hyenas. We've got a ribbon that's standing up here. And uh, yes. Another one, there's four, there's four hyenas here. One, two, three, there's four. So you've got Roman, there's another one here, looks like in Bilu. And then another one standing up, look, uh, that looks like maybe that, uh, 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 this one here behind, uh, sorry, just going to quickly do IDs here. That one there looks like maybe the immigrant uh, male. And then there's another hyena that just went to lie down there. So we've got this immigrant, oh no, sorry, that is Comet. So we've got Comet, Ribbon, and then here's one on the right. Let's take a look at this one quickly on the right here. 
And I think this is in Bilu. Hello, four hyenas here at the Baobab Dam. So yeah, uh, this is nice. And of course, ribbon moving a little bit there. Comet is going to be falling once again. And there's a fourth one that's behind the bush. I'm not too sure which one is the fourth there. So how nice is this? We've got like a few of the Juma clan here. Hello. This is wonderful. 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 Coming here from Bobab Dam area. I'm just going to try and see if we can get that fourth one on if it does come out from behind the bush. Let me see. Does it do an ID on there? Yeah. Here comes the other one. I'm not too sure which one this is. I'm going to try and look carefully there. Uh, I'm struggling to ID this one. Oh, Sally, yes, it's amazing, 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 amazing. Four hyenas at Bobab Dam. Oh, I am so chuffed. This is fantastic, and all of them walking together, so I am going to follow them. But if I do start up and move, I think I'm going to lose signal, so I'll have to maybe, I don't know. And we're going to give it a go. We'll give it a chance, what do you think, because they're moving away now. Jared, do you think I can do it? Should work. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Look, just inch forward. Sorry, I know that the signal side of things is not great here. I'm going to just try another two meters ahead and let's see from the apple. Oh, here's wild, oh, wild dogs. Yes, wild dogs. Yes, wild dogs has joined us. Wild dogs has come in. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's wild dogs here. Wild dogs. Oh, my word. All of a sudden. This is amazing. This is brilliant. Can you believe this? All of a sudden, three wild dogs have just come in. Oh, a little bit of uh, interaction between the hyenas and the wild dogs. I think this is the pack of three. This is the Toulon Breakaway pack. Yeah, this is this must be the Toulon Breakaway pack. Oh my word! All right, I'm gonna let's uh, let's see where they're gonna go. Lola, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this worked out perfect. So this this is the pack it used to be four of them. Um, unfortunately, the female, the alpha female with the collar was killed recently by a male a leopard known as the Timbavati male and now they are left with just the three so this is known as the Toulon breakaway pack there's the three of them wow 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 now that is now a bit of a, a sudden change for for a sighting from a real, <laughs> from impalas thinking that I've uh, missed out on some sightings this morning till to this it just shows you got to expect the unexpected anything can happen at any time wait maybe there's more oh no I don't think this might be the too long break I'm so just looking at the patterns here it's a three but there might be more oh yeah yes all of them oh look yeah, sorry Cameron all right, so I do apologize. I thought, okay, yeah, it's bald dog, so I don't think it is that pack then. Yeah. Oh, my word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, there's that stumpy tail one. So it must be the Mbali pack. Isn't this just amazing? Just want to quickly let the guys know. Sorry. Uh, stations, I've just got uh, Shlami Maklawa yeah, at uh, Bobab, uh, Bobab Dam. Uh, 
Right, let me just try and position here differently. Sorry, Cameron. I think because we're going to be shooting behind the vehicle, I don't want that. Um, Jared, I'm just going to try and reposition. Let's see how it works. This bit, as I say. We all know the struggle of finding the perfect gift. But what if you could give them an unforgettable experience? Something truly extraordinary. Introducing Nature Eye. Fly a real drone remotely at iconic locations, witnessing the beauty of nature like never before. Sign up to be an explorer and you could win one of these experiences yourself. Visit natureye.com today. Got the one hyena is going to follow. Of guts. Guts. I think the other hyenas have decided not to follow these dogs. But in many times you do have that. You'll find that you'll find the hyenas try and follow the wild dogs. In wild case dogs. In case if they do make a kill, see if they can mm -hmm. see if they can get that opportunity, get that opportunity to, to steal, to steal the kill from the them. Kill. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, it looks like they are heading a little bit further into into Biffelzook. And this is exactly with the male line as well. So the big male line that we've been following this morning, all the tracks went in here. Well, beans, those dogs will run for dear life. That male lion will chase them down. But uh, wild dog, they'll, they'll run. No, they won't even try and challenge a, a male lion. Not a good idea. Because if they do ch try and challenge a male lion, well, they will get killed. That's why many, many a dog uh, fatality, wild dog fatality uh, in the Sabi Sands, or not Sabi Sands, but in the Greater Kruger Park, is uh, due to uh, lions. Elimination of competition. I'm going 
comment here. I'm going to sit here. Maybe that line might be in that uh, in the thicket, so you never know. They're all just staring at something inside there. Even the hyenas are holding back a little bit. Oh, Ray, for sure. I, I, I'm so happy seeing this big pack. I mean, I was very envious on uh, Steve's uh, sighting yesterday afternoon with this pack. So, yeah, I'm very, very glad that uh, at least I can get to see. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, coming, they're, they're chasing the hyenas. Oh, they're going to chase hyenas. Ah! <laughs> what are they chasing all the hyenas here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Run! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I think uh, I think one of my best uh, interaction I've seen in my career is uh, uh, wild dogs and hyenas. I love that interaction because it's always back and forth, back and forth, and then the hyenas will try and come back again. <laughs> See, these ones are going straight. I think that hyenas tucked itself in that bush somewhere. <laughs> uh, oh, wonderful. You can see they're just listening out. I don't know what they're trying to pick up on, but... Uh, Maybe they've been sniffing around here, listening out. Maybe he's still trying to do a little bit of a hunt here. I don't see that they've got full bellies this morning. Jan Jan, it looked like there's uh, some youngsters. Uh, it looks like youngsters maybe from, uh, from last year. Uh, I'm not too sure the real makeup on the, on the Mbali pack. You know, we don't get to see them that often. Um, but it looks like there's a few youngsters here. I mean, they usually have their puppies around about May, June. That's when they'll have their denning sites and then go and den somewhere and have their youngsters. And then from from around about August, so actually September, October, they will the puppies will be large enough to uh, start moving with the adults. Oh, another hyena is going to take its chance coming back here to the dogs. We will see it coming from behind there. Mm -hmm. You're going to get chased again. Uh, you're going to get chased again. Yeah, there you go. There they go. There they go. They got, they got chasing him again. <laughs> Watch how they all work as a pack, it's amazing. Oh, it's gonna try to come around this side. Oh, where are you gonna go? Oh, no, you know, wants to try and get past there. Oh, wild dogs are fighting. Oh, it's gonna chase <laughs> Go! <laughs> that is brilliant. This is action packed. Oh. <laughs> No, 
No, this is an element of play. This is typical the interaction with, uh, you'll find hyenas and wild dogs are hardly, they'll never really do too much damage to one another because it's, uh, it's just more kind of, you know, chasing back and forth cat and mouse game. Um, you can just see like just nipping at the, the hindquarters. So, yeah. Mm. And I, you know, just uh, standing up there. And I think sometimes, I, I've got a feeling sometimes wild dogs will get they get pretty much irritated with hyenas just following them all the time because they know as soon as they make a kill, and then the hyenas are going to bring, bring, even if the hyenas kind of gang up against the, the wild dogs, then it's a problem. You know, if they've got like five, six, seven hyenas, much stronger predator compared to a wild dog. They just get irritated with the, the presence of them being around. Oh, there's another another hyena coming in there, eh? You see that? There's so many. I don't know what's it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six hyenas now. Six. Six, yeah. Six hyenas, I've counted here now. But how nice is it that it's in an open area like this, that we, you know, it's not in the thick bush. I, I think Cameron is doing an, an amazing job just to follow some of these hyenas and wild dogs, the chase. Yeah. It's quite... Oh, hyena, even the hyena, chasing hyenas, oh, hyenas chasing hyenas now. Yeah, here goes the wild dogs. They're gonna go. They're going for. They're gonna like. Okay. Let us go and chase them now. There we go. <laughs> they're gonna come out here somewhere. I can hear them making a noise at the... Hey, yes, oh, I think I hear a lot of the, the, the... I hear hyenas screaming in the in the bushes there at the moment. Here comes another hyena in aid. Let's see, come and assist there. Maybe not a good idea. You've got 16 wild dogs, well. Almost feel like you're gonna get overpowered. Welcome to Destination Safari, the wild earth travel show that showcases luxurious safari lodges. Overlooking your river plain is the Tlorsi Game Lodge. Today we're going to explore this wonderful retreat offering rich game viewing and luxurious accommodation for the whole family.
even some of the hippos <coughs> came out to observe on what was happening around there. You know, what's happening here? Ari, yes, no, this is bush tag at its finest for sure, Ari. No, this has been brilliant. Absolutely, what a sighting. What a sighting for the morning. That tops it for me. And I don't mind those lines crossing into, into other properties because this was just brilliant. I do apologize for the noise. It's just a, a vehicle that's coming past us. Nice one, Cedric. Wild dogs and hyena in action. I'm happy you were able to find them this morning. We are on our way to a sighting on <laughs> Fulhamun's Dip, and suddenly the world's entire population of Impala has uh, found their way in front of us. We do love you, Impala. We really, really do. But we're just going around the corner to go and have a look. That's something I do humbly apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to the Impala there. But to also any of you out there that would have liked me to have spoken about the Impala there, we will have many opportunities. So the Buffalo Cross North. Um, they didn't actually veer towards Bufflesuk Dam. When I got to Bufflesuk Dam, there was no sign. We went back around. I looked at the tracks a little bit more carefully, and um, they went a little bit more to the western side, and they've crossed north into Bufflesuk. So, as Cedric said earlier, everything seems to be crossing into Bufflesuk, the buffalo included. Jessica, not yet. Not yet. I drive very nicely. And Paul, do I drive nicely? Yeah. And Paul says, yeah, I think he's just being nice. I haven't actually had anyone get car sick. Um, I, it's generally something I do ask people, and some people who do get car sick normally know it's better to sit in the front if you get car sick. Sitting on the back where the car does this, not ideal. Kelly, he's, he's always holding on. Paul's always holding on. He's always prepared. South Africa, you feel like I'm going quickly now. I'm really not. I mean, the speedometer's on zero, below zero. But um, it does look like we're going fast on the camera. It really does. But I'm not speeding. Um, when I do speed, then my hat flies back and uh, I sit back in the seat like this. Now, we don't really speed. Every now and again, we might go a little faster than normal. 
but I'm always in low range, so you can't actually go that fast in low range. Okay, there's an elephant. Young teenager, a little bit upset with life. Thank you so much, William. Okay, this elephant is not very happy, but we'll just go around the corner here. Something else I wanted to. Oh, he's going to come out. Are you going to come out? Gonna come show us how big and strong he is. Oh, hello. Yes, you are such a such a tough boy, aren't you? <laughs> I love it when elephants behave like this. We're trying to intimidate. You know, he's a teenager. He's probably just left the herd. And he wants to show everybody how big and strong and unafraid he is. But when you don't play the game, he backs down. Backs down. See, the head is held a little bit higher. The tail is not moving at all. Now he's feeding. But you know, mum is very scary and everybody runs away from mum. So as soon as he's out of the herd and he's on his own he, he wants to chase things he wants to chase everything everything must run away from him and when you do run away from him he gets excited and will chase you so you never run away or drive fast away from young elephants that are behaving like that a breeding herd that is upset and there's babies and things are going a bit crazy if you are already away from them then go keep going um, don't compromise the people on your vehicle by speeding, but don't stop if you're in already past a herd. Rather just keep going if they're going all mental and crazy. But if it's a youngster like this, he will keep chasing you if you drive away. See, he's watching us. Come on, come say hello. He's going to come a little bit close. He's uncertain. He's a bit lonely. Penguins glow while he's a youngster. He's a youngster. He's not a really big elephant, this one. Needs to find some guidance from some older bulls. But if I start my car and drive away, he will, he will move after us. It's just what he does. He feels like it's him who's intimidated us, so he'll keep chasing. I was thinking, why is this guy so calm? Why is he not driving away from me? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, dust in the nose. Okay, Mr. Elephant, we're going to go around the corner and have a look at something else. You just behave yourself. When I start, he's going to, he's going to react. No, no reaction. If I move away, he's going to react. <sighs> Fun and games. You obviously don't want to cause him to react, so if he does react to you, you must switch off. Otherwise it becomes a game for him. A game that um, could cause other people to find themselves in trouble. Let's see. 
Here comes and Paul. We're just going to have to have a, a stern talk into him. He's going away the other direction now. He wants to play. And as soon as you stand or go backwards, it's like, oh, that wasn't the kind of game I was looking to play. <laughs> uh, there's herds, uh, tracks of a whole herd here. Oh, tracks of tracks of something else right here. Hello. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> A lot goes on behind the scenes of a safari. Sign up to be an explorer and get exclusive access to Behind the Safari. Sit back, relax and take a deep breath. Learn more about the Wild Rift team. I would not normally keep it on the dashboard, but I'm going to show it to you there. Come along for the surprises and chaos. Download the Wild Earth app today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. If you've ever experienced a roadblock before, this is about as solid a roadblock as you get. The ox peckers in tow. All red build. The one that just landed on the, the back side there is a youngster. It doesn't have much coloration in the beak. Two youngsters with this group. There we go, those two hanging on the side. See, they've got a grayish sort of beak. It, it, unlikely to find. I mean, both red and yellow bull oxpecker youngsters look the same, but you're unlikely to find three adult red bulls and then two young yellow bulls with them. Unlikely that you're going to find that. Someone's just talking on the radio, just give me a moment. You're yeah, standing by. I 
I know Cedric has been with those Matloa for some time now. We have called it in on the radio. I'm not sure if anyone else has responded. <laughs> Darcy Miller, best roadblock in the world. Yeah, we've had an elephant roadblock this morning. We had a Nepala roadblock on our way into this area, which was quite easily navigated. And now, well, the Southern White Rhino. And uh, on the floor there to the left of the rhino's face, you can see that the oxpeckers are having a proper sand bathing now. When you get too much oil in the feathers from the preening, we saw the owl this morning doing some preening. Sometimes the, the best way to get rid of excess oil is sand. If you've ever been to a, a petrol station, what do they have around the petrol station in case of oil spills, fuel spills? They've got buckets of sand. You throw the sand down, the oil gets absorbed into the sand and then you can broom or sweep up or scoop up the sand with shovels and then you can dispose of it. The best way to, to adhere oil. And so birds will do that when they get excess of oil on the feathers. Cover themselves in sand and then they'll have a little shake and uh, those little bits of extra oil fall off. Anita, I'm not sure, but they don't, um, they're not a ruminant, so they actually physically need to nap, but I would say they're probably feeding for 16 hours a day, so four to six hours a day they probably find time for napping they might even eat a little bit longer than that constantly feeding zebras elephants and rhino but uh, in certain times of the day they find a nice shady spot and they have a proper snooze And some people say elephants can feed up to 16, 17 hours a day. Some people say as much as 20 hours a day feeding. So I'd say rhinos are a very similar sort of number. Gabe, you're glad that we get to see rhinos, me too. Yeah, the brown crown chagra calling. This younger one is like, come on, get up already. Oh no, that's going to park down as well. <laughs> they like to sleep on the sand. It's nice and soft, it can often be quite cool. It's free of sticks. Alex, since the rhinos were calves, these birds have bothered them. So they do get irritated sometimes, but there's only so much they can do. So yes, they do definitely irritate them. They go into their ears and into their noses, but they also know that they serve a purpose. But I don't think they enjoy the process of rhino, of birds going into their nostrils or their ears. It's ticklish. Maybe they do enjoy it, but um, it's a very important symbiotic relationship where the birds 
are removing ectoparasites. Rhinos are benefiting from that. Two youngsters having a proper little sand bath now. They're flicking it all over the body. <laughs> Catherine, a nice lazy Monday morning. Rhinos are making you sleepy. That's okay, hopefully you don't have too much to do today. Sleep when you're tired, work when you're not tired, exercise. Rhinos will do exactly what they want, when they want, so will leopards. Most of animals just go through the flow, and there's no time, there's no this is when we're going to do what we do. It's all in the moment. I think we can learn a lot about that. Our Western society is so structured on time. Everything has to go according to a specific schedule. I love it when I'm on leave. Things happen exactly how they're supposed to happen. I do like to rise with the sun. Keep the circadian rhythms flowing. Amazing how how much more potent your day is when you are rising early and going to bed early. Lots of studies out at the moment of, of people who work night shifts not following the cycles of the sun because it's just the nature of their work that it is actually apparently impacting on, on longevity. We as a species evolved to rise with the sun and sort of settle with the sun as well. The advent of computers and lights allowed us to work through the night. Which I'm pretty sure is impacting on the nervous system. And there is some science that proves it. So sleep when you're tired. Lynn, they do. They make the most ridiculous sounds for an animal. They make these squealing sounds. And grunting and squealing sounds. The males grunt and even make high-pitched squealing. It almost sounds like a dolphin. It's, um, it's definitely not what you'd expect from an animal the size of a rhino. seamless and tranquil connection to nature? <laughs> Download the Wild Earth app and become an explorer to enjoy ad-free viewing. Stay tuned into your favorite shows and enjoy the sights and sounds of nature uninterrupted. Explorer subscriptions are available monthly, biannually, and yearly. Sign up today. Wild Earth. Connecting with nature.
And these elephants are now... Perhaps they were at one stage. But they eat and then they move. And they eat and then they move, just like that one who's going to disappear into the brush. You can hear the branches breaking all over. They are definitely quite spread out. It looks like they are slowly reaching the sort of apex of this dune that they're on, and then um, they will very likely move down below into another thicket. Well, that's good. We had a, a glimpse of them. That's how it goes with elephants, and especially in thick areas. I mean, if they move behind foliage, that's what they do. And that was great. I'm happy. All right, so he's just sitting here at Gary Dam. We've got a beautiful green back heron, striated heron. And is he preening itself? But he's got a perfect little platform there. A nice little hunting platform. Lovely birds. I love watching them hunt. And it's so much patience when they're sitting on those platforms or when they're moving along the water edge. to see if they're going to get lucky with a fish or the frog. How nice was that sighting this uh, this morning with those wild dogs? Wow! So I left that area as they did go further north into another property called Biffles Hook. And once again, it looked like the hyenas were trailing them as well. So yeah, not too for sure how much further they we're going to go up. Oh, yes, a hyena right in front of us. Here's June. <laughs> is he talking about Aida? You know, what is happening? <laughs> I know you're looking for it. Hey, June. Coming out from, the, from nowhere. Now, this is interesting. Now, we've seen June quite a few times here in this drainage line. I wonder. Now, I'm starting to wonder if, a, if there's not a, a den somewhere along this drainage line behind Gary Dam wall. Because every time we see his June now, it's here. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe more wild dogs will come here. You never know. Maybe a leopard will just decide to jump out of a tree for us. <laughs> uh, Kelly, I know. Look, I think this morning has been quite a few surprises. And it's been fantastic. What a sunrise safari. Really, really fantastic. It just shows you, you got to, <laughs> you think there's nothing happening. All of a sudden, all, everything just pops out. It looks like everything was looking for me. Black yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what happened now is on the way down here, we've got a black mamba on the road. And unfortunately, as soon as we went live with it, uh, what happened is, uh, the, I was getting a bit worried about this black mamba because it started going into the bush and I was right in front of the vehicle and next moment, next to us, out of nowhere, a baby kudu, like a little kudu jumped out of the bush. I got such 
<laughs> I got such a fright, I almost jumped out of the vehicle. Uh, <laughs> and Cameron just laughs. <laughs> he was like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's mm, quite a morning. It's one of these mornings where I don't even have to have a cup of coffee. Linka, yes. Oh, no, Cameron's a good luck charm here this morning for sure. Monday morning. Yeah, you said, you said Monday. So Cameron says uh, Monday morning and Friday afternoon. Friday afternoons and Monday mornings. It seems like it's his moment and things happen. So I'll make sure that Cameron's on the vehicle with me on a Friday afternoon and on a Monday morning for sure. <laughs> Where's June going off to? But now this makes me think a bit. Sorry, with the June situation, this uh, spotted hyena. Um, the other day we saw her yeah, in the drainage line just a little bit further down with um, with Ndebele's youngster. And a few days prior to that one as well, we found her pretty much yeah, close to the dam wall. And then... Two days ago, we've got all those hyenas walking down towards the central giraffe crossing area. So maybe I'll take a little bit of a walk around here this afternoon in this drainage line. I know there is one or two termite mounds here. Maybe they're using that as a den sites. Looks like she's now moving towards the camp area. Anneli, yes, it was a very, very special sighting so this uh, this morning, always to remember. And I mean, I think that, that wild dog sighting to me was just fantastic. Just watching those wild dogs chasing those hyenas and uh, <laughs> it was quite entertaining. Quite entertaining. But yes, uh, once again to everybody, thank you so much for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. It has been a lot of uh, action around and uh, thanks for all the comments and all the questions that you have sent through to us we do really appreciate it and well i'm hoping that this afternoon is going to bring some more uh luck more amazing sightings i'm hoping some leopard sightings will be fantastic i think we are, are very much in need of rosettes so yeah i'm going to cross my fingers for that dream about leopards today maybe wear a leopard print scarf around my head. That's going to be a good idea. Mm. But yes, uh, from uh, Cameron and myself and of course the rest of the Wild Earth uh, crew, have a wonderful day and we will see you on the Sunset Safari this afternoon. <laughs>